Welcome to the first lecture series on your travel towards learning the basics of ABAP in a, from a beginner's perspective. And I am happy that you have enrolled for this session. As we have seen in the introduction, this series of sessions are going to be very simple for anyone to learn ABAP from a functional perspective or as a pressure perspective. Let me not delay in going through this particular session on introduction to SAP. Uh, the primary objective of this particular session is going to be on making you understand the basics of SAP, how to log on to SAP, understand the basic navigations. You will also learn to interact with SAP sessions, etc. When we speak about SAP, we speak about two things. One is what is SAP, and we also say SAP as an R3 system. So we'll have a clarification over what is R3. So SAP itself stands for Systems, Applications, and Products in Data Processing, and where R3 stands for Real Time Three Tier Architecture. So I guess this will not make sense now. Uh, we'll go proceed with further slides give you a clear explanation of what is R3. You can see this SAP product suit is from a German based company and it is the best ERP available in the market because of its industry specific practices and the main strength of SAP is its R3 architecture. Once again, R3 architecture, we'll see brief in the coming slides. Here it is. Let me give you a small instance explaining you about what were used before SAP. You can see that this part is nothing but a typical Java system, which is R2 in nature. So there is two layers which is called as a presentation layer and application layer presentation layer is where you literally code whereas application layer is where it gets processed so whenever you code and the processing there is some amount of data that is getting stored in the database the problem is where the database resides whether it resides inside the system or it resides outside the system in java system we do not have a native database belongs to Java. Either we use a third party database, which may be MySQL or Oracle DB, and that database is present outside the Java system. It means the retrieval of data and storing of data happens with an external source which is kept outside the system because of which the data loss and the slowness in the data transfer might happen. So SAP being used by very big enterprises, they don't want to lose their data and they don't want a slowness in processing their data. And hence, SAP has planned for an architecture called R3 architecture, where the database is present inside the SAP system. So the data storing and retrieval is very fast since it is present inside the SAP system. Now to throw more light on what exactly is the R3 architecture, we speak this particular thing. Like the presentation layer is literally where you interface with the system. And whenever you go into the mail, when you enter your username and password, there is this particular screen comes in which says loading. So application layer is literally some computations that is carried out with the input that you've given, which literally you cannot see. So I always tell my students, whatever you can see is a presentation layer. Whatever you cannot see is an application layer. Database layer in SAP is very, very transparent. And literally you can see the data, the tables, the columns, the headers, everything in the database layer. So all these three things together called as an R3 architecture. Now, proceeding ahead with 
how you can interact with SAP. So basically, SAP is interacted with two things. One is via an SAP logon pad. What you are seeing literally is an SAP logon where you have the list of systems present here. And you have to choose a system and it will prompt you to enter your username and the password. The password is case sensitive and SAP as you know supports multi languages so you have to mention which language you are going to enter with. You can see this is the easy access screen and whenever you see something like here like SAP demo system the best friend demo runs IDES, IDES ERP it means that you are landing on the demo system and this is the first screen of any SAP environment which is called as an SAP easy access screen. And as I told you select the server click on login button and client always represents the client ID, username and password and the language which I told you before and you can see here this is a place where we enter a very important component called transaction code which we will be seeing further in our lecture and here we have a log off button and here we have a new session button. We will see more when we get into the system. Uh, so these are the basic navigations that you should know before you proceed with the screens, proceed with SAP. So let me show you like slash n refers to opens an existing easy access screen by replacing the current transaction. So slash n followed by a transaction code does this operation. Slash n followed by something opens a transaction followed by any transaction code which replaces the current transaction. It means basically understand when you say slash n it means it is going to replace. When you say slash n alone from any transaction it is going to open an easy access screen that I have shown you. But when you say slash n followed by some transaction it is going to open that particular transaction code that you have mentioned here replacing the currently visible transaction. Similarly, slash O displays an overview of the current transaction. I will show you in a minute. Slash 0, slash O followed by a transaction code opens a new transaction without replacing the current transaction. I will show you practically in a moment. A maximum number of 6 to 8 screens can be opened in parallel. It means SAP allows multitasking. Now I will take you into how we can proceed with the practical hands-on so that you will get better understanding of whatever you have seen here. Let me take you up. This is my SAP environment and this is an SAP logon where you will be interacting with your SAP. Now I will double click on this particular logon where it will be taking me to the list of systems available here. In my example, I have taken only one system which is present here. And how this is connected with SAP? You can just select this, click on this button, edit button. You can see these are the server details that it is connecting with. And double click on here where it prompts you to enter a client ID which is defaulted here and the language English is defaulted here. Now I have to enter my user account and my password. As I told you SAP EC access screen which is nothing but the first screen that you will have in SAP. And we have also seen that this is a space where you enter the transaction code and as of now I am entering a random transaction code. We will see more about transaction codes in the further sessions. So uh, for instance I am entering a transaction code called SE38 and clicking on enter it takes me directly to that particular transaction code. Now if I use slash O I told you it gives an overview of this particular transaction just click on enter you can see it gives an overview of the transaction says that it is ABAB editor and time which is good enough information right and when I say slash O followed by 
a transaction code what it does it's going to it's going to open a new transaction without replacing this particular transaction so se 37 again enter see a new transaction code is opened here which is called as a function builder but you can see here it never closed the ABAP editor so ABAP editor is available in parallel and in parallel to that you have function builder okay let me give slash n alone which will always take you to the sap ec access screen and let let it be here i'll go into the abab editor and if i say slash n followed by a transaction code it replaces the current transaction with this particular transaction code. let us see from here see abab editor is no more which has been replaced by the function builder so these are the navigation schema in addition to that this is a log off button click on this you can see log off yes and this is a new session creation if you click on this one, two three four five six you can see six sessions it says max maximum number of sessions reached so this uh, sap system is configured in a way that it can accept maximum of six sessions and some systems may permit you to go with eight sessions in parallel so that provides a very good way for multitasking hope uh, i made a clear point with giving a hands on over the log login steps uh, i click on log off now click on yes so it takes me out of sap so this is the basic level navigation that you find in sap Thanks for watching this session. See you in the next session.